Okay, so uh, hello, Matthias. Well, thank you for stopping by. Um, so we've got some questions around the U-train, especially in Germany or Bayern München. We'd like to ask is, uh, what are your perspectives on the new youth system reform, so which, which is called Funino, and the new large wish Liga in Germany? And would this initiative help Germany in producing top talents for the future? So can you share a bit? Oh yeah, first of all, uh, thanks for having me and yeah. um, uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. And um, yeah, it's a very good question because um, that is something we are looking for um, to produce new talents, mm. uh, better talents again, uh, to have an even better a national team. I, I yeah. think the national team is still strong, but um, definitely if in football you s stop developing, you are already going down. So which means you always need to find a new way. How do you keep on developing your football in your region, in, in your country? And that's why I think it's a good step. And uh, yes, I think it will produce uh, better players mm -hmm. because um, in the end it's about ball touches. Yeah. And what you have with Funinho, um, you have much more ball touches mm -hmm. um, in every game. And every player, especially the younger ones, the smaller ones, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the bigger ones, um, 10 years plus, I'm talking really talk about the smaller ones when they yeah. just start playing football. It is a great sport. Um, it's, it's a great training content, mm -hmm. let's say it like this, um, for the younger ones to have more ball, ball touches, more goals. They're scoring more goals mm -hmm. um, to um, maybe also let the, the parents um, uh, sh uh, close their mouth, yeah. let's say it like this. Because in the end, the, the, the Funinho game is so fast yeah, yeah. and the kids are playing it. It's not about the coaches or the parents, it's about so the kids. And also about enjoyment as well. Yeah, yeah and yeah. that's where the name comes yeah. from, right? From fun and Nino. Nino means kid in Spanish. So that's why definitely I think it's a good thing. Um, mm. What we have to think about as well, it's never only one thing which happen, mm. which helps you to produce better players. Mm. It's always... Uh, it needs to be a comprehensive training, so that's why I think Funi need, needs to be a part of it, mm -hmm. but not the only thing. Uh, so therefore, there is, it's still important that the, the kids play on bigger goals, yeah. that the kids have competition, that mm -hmm. the kids know what is winning and losing. Yeah. That is also important. So yes, it will help because more kids get more ball, to ball touches, um, but it should be only a part of it. Mm -hmm. So based on this question, so uh, what do you think of um, the kids having the experience of uh, winning or losing? Is, this, is, is it really important or, uh, or doing something else or less only the skill development or is it, the ma it, is it helping for their mentality it's development? It's yeah. a, I mean winning and losing, especially yeah. winning, this, this, this eager to win is, is very part of professional football. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be from, like, um, I mean, if you want to be the top player, mm -hmm. you need, you, your, your goal needs to be better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. That is, needs, needs to be your goal, which means you yourself, you want to win every match, no matter whether in, in training or in a match. But you also need to enjoy the match. So that's why, again, Funinho is great as a part of the, uh, of the training, but we shouldn't lose the competitiveness of the match because in the end, if we think about the top level football, it's all about winning or losing. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why it needs to be part of the uh, development and part of the training um, as well. Mm, cool. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So uh, some individuals have suggested Germany is lagging behind France, England, Portugal and other top European countries in terms of producing top players in recent years. But we can see it some young players like Florian Wurz from Leverkusen, uh, Jamal Musilia from Bayern München, Pavlovich from the uh, Bayern as well, so mm -hmm. and Chan Unsen from Nuremberg, and even Yidis now starting for the Juventus. Um, but clearly demonstrated that Germany can still produce exceptional talents. So, uh, Moreover, from the Germany's U17 team winning both U U17 Euro and U17 uh, World Cup in 2023. So, do you believe that the future of the Germany national team can only get brighter? 
I mean, there is talent in Germany because uh, Germany is a sports nation and mm. Germany is also a football nation, mm. which, mean f which means football is part of the culture there. Yeah. Uh, so every Monday uh, when you go to work there, I mean, I'm working in China, so that's why it's a little bit different. I'm working football, so that's why I yeah. talk about football all the yeah. time. But in Germany as well, everybody's talking about the Bundesliga. Yeah. Um, on Monday is talk about the results, which means it is part of the, uh, of the culture very important. We need to have this here in China as well. Yeah. So um, football should be, should be part of the culture as well. But coming back to your question, um, yes, there is talent, and, um, but to be, I mean, under 17 World Cup winner or Euro Cup winner is already a great achievement. Yeah. But there is still a, 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 huge, um, a huge step ahead of them yeah. to be professional football. Mm -hmm. So they need to still be hungry to um, work very hard in order to not only be a talent, but to prove that they actually can play for the national team. That is very important and, um, and that is still a big step for all those boys um, mm -hmm. and all the clubs, they need to work very closely with them and the, 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 the boys, the, the, the players, they need to stay humble and hungry. It's very important that they keep working and don't think that this success is already something, yeah. something amazing. It is not because they are not professional players yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's why there is talent, and I think there will be a great talent. I Florian Wirtz, Jamal Musiala is an yeah. amazing player. So yes, and um, I'm looking forward to see those uh, those players uh, keep developing and um, having them in the in the national team. Then hopefully later. Um, how do you see the those youth players from this age group? So how 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 could they maintain their competitive edge or their hunger for success? Uh, what's the key? Uh, quality in, inside the, the player's mind? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it needs to be about passion, yeah? a passion for the sport and, um, and you need to have this passion in yourself and this is something you build in the a, in a younger ages. Yeah. So, and that's why I think, and, and I always like to compare it with, with uh, Asia because I, I work here in the Asian market and um, I think the first step uh, in, 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 in countries um, here where they still need to do some spe steps to become a top football nation, um, for example China, there needs to be passion in football and there needs to be passion on the field. Yeah. So the kids, they need to love football mm -hmm. in order to make the next steps when they are, for example, 17, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. There it's crucial that they keep on working on, a, on the highest level, mm -hmm. which means they shouldn't just train. They shouldn't just say, okay, I mean, training is done. Okay, um, I go home. That's it because I'm, uh, I'm very talented. Talent is only one part. Yep. The other part needs to be work. And you will work more if you love the sports. Mm -hmm. So that's why the basics needs to be done in, um, in, in, in younger ages. And there we are back uh, to Funinho again and to those um, those training contests which make uh, like like games and, and, and enjoy football, enjoy the game, enjoy sports. That is very important and then they're gonna have this, this mentality, okay, I wanna be the best, I wanna keep on working when it's very hard sometimes. Yeah. And then they will become um, um, top players. That's, uh, uh, but you need to, to, to have the, <laughs> the highest talent, that, yeah. that for sure. Okay. So yeah. let's move on from the youth national team to Bayern München. So, uh, so we've got some examples from the Bayern München youth products, such as uh, Stanley Sitch, uh, Andrew Stieler, uh, Yidis, uh, Serki, and Tillman so to the PSV recently. So it uh, seems they developed um, further. Um, even significantly after leaving the club. So does it indicate that uh, Bayern can still train talent players, but perhaps they were not given adequate opportunities that or incentive they could stay in the club? And also, um, how would you assess the impact of the 100 million euro Bayern campus, which is uh, established back in 2017? So is it truly intent to promote player development or is it just uh, Primary at so piece. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, the question is uh, very interesting because, of yes. course, it's not a showpiece. Yeah. Eh? As soon as you invest such a mm -hmm. high amount of money, so coming to your last question first, yeah. um, it has to be about uh, talent development. Yeah. And uh, what we see in global football is the transfer fees are, um, are very high right now, yeah. which means it definitely makes sense to invest into your youth. And if you can produce those players who have the value, 100 million value, like Musiala uh, right now, um, definitely is much cheaper than buying him. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's why, yes, the, the, the campus and the investment into youth uh, definitely makes sense. And yes, Bayern is producing top players, Bundesliga players. Yeah. And you mentioned some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also need to know that, obviously, not all the players can play for Bayern Munich. Yeah. And sometimes, it's a step to another club yeah. and then coming back to Bayern Munich. And we saw that uh, in the past as well with Lahm, um, with Alaba, for example, they did that as well. So, um, because in the end it's about if you're a youth player and if you're coming from the FC Bayern youth and you want to play in the first league, in the, in the first team, I mean the first team is full of uh, world-class players. Mm -hmm. And are you already world-class after or, or with 18, 19 years old? There is only a handful of, of players who, who, who are on this level already, or, or some players. But all the others, they need to go out and then they hopefully come back and then they uh, still can play for Bayern Munich. For example, I mean, we have um, Asian players as well who uh, made this step. I mean, if you think about uh, um, Chong Wuyong, yeah. Chong Yoing, yeah. um, who was okay. also uh, developed, um, let's say it like this, in, on, on campus, uh, mm -hmm. on, on our FC Bayern campus and then went to Freiburg and now is playing uh, for Stuttgart, for yeah. example. Yeah, we, have, um, we have Taichi Fukui, who was playing in our, uh, in our second team and was mm -hmm. uh, also training uh, with the pros and, and also had appearances uh, in the first team and now is on loan as well. We have a Chinese goalkeeper yeah. um, we signed. So um, there are examples and we hope that those players can progress. Whether they make it to FC Bayern again, we will see because again you need to be world class to to play for the first team yeah cool so let's back to the next the team so in, in traditionally so uh Bayern Munich is uh, contribute lots of the next team players but uh recently um there's a kind of the um, decline performance you know the the world cup exits uh in the um, in successive terms and also but there's a kind of um emergence of teams like Leverkusen and Stuttgart, um, like in the Bundesliga this season. So, mm -hmm. there's, so we and also there's more players to have emerged for, to fill the so-called problem positions that like uh, me to start at left back and Unders and centre forward, and also uh, there's uh, many players to second Rüdiger, Kimmich. Uh, Worth Musiala, Leroy Sane, and Gloss, and even the potential recall of Tony Cruz, which is yeah quite recently. So uh, Germany appears to be competitive some on paper again at this. So um, what's the take on the prospects as they will be playing at home so this summer? Mm. I mean, it's um, and this is only a personal opinion. Huh? Yeah, so sure. um, yeah. and I'm not into it yeah so yeah. so in order to have a, to, to, to give a, a a good answer you need to be into a, a team yeah? and you need you need to know the, the players you need to know how they work with each other you need to know the problems there mm -hmm. but uh, a personal opinion from outside um, when i see it i definitely agree with you that there is still a great team uh, mm -hmm. german uh, german national team and there are still um, i mean they gonna they can play very good football yes and I also agree with you that there are problem positions mm -hmm. um, where we could or where other nations have much better players. Yeah. Yeah, also, if you think about the striker position, Undav, is he really a one top striker? No. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so, um, um, therefore, we have problems on that. And then again, we need to think about. Why do we have those problem positions in Germany? And that, is, uh, that needs to be the top of the, the youth departments again. Thinking, okay, what is the issue? We don't have strikers, um, top center backs. Do we really have them? Of, of course, we have um, Rüdiger, but, but all the others, are they like top level, like all the others, the full backs? So we need to think about how do we educate our kids? Uh, and, um, 
And there I think we uh, did a lot of passing drills and, um, and everybody knows how to, to, to pass short passes and, and to, 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 to play tiki-taka, let's say it like this. And we forgot about some other things which are crucial and very important in football, like scoring goals, winning, the, um, winning a 1v1 um, offensively, but also defensively. Like doing the right thing in the most important moments of the match, in the box, in, in, the, in the most um, important areas of the, um, of the field as well. Doing those things and training those things as well. I'm not sure whether we, um, whether we forgot about that um, a little bit. So, um, therefore, uh, it is good to see um, players like Undaf and, and Mittelstadt who, who played a long time and now they are performing very well. So, there is, again, there is um, enough talent. And I'm looking forward to uh, see the Euros because mm -hmm. um, with this team you can, you can be successful. But we also know that, in, uh, especially when you play at home as well, I mean sometimes it's small things in football which decide does it go to the right side or to the left side, to the positive side or negative side. Mm -hmm. And those small things, if they are on your side, and sometimes it's luck. I mean, I as a as a former coach, or I, as a coach, I, sometimes I, I, I try to say, okay, you shouldn't depend on luck. But to be honest, I mean, when we think about 2014, um, when um, Germany was playing Algeria, yeah. I mean, there was a moment where Manuel Neuer had a, had a great uh, catch with his foot and, uh, and Algeria didn't, didn't uh, score. Yeah. But if there wasn't Manuel Neuer, I mean, maybe Germany wouldn't have won the World Cup at that time. And everybody would have said, ah, the German team is not good enough. And then everybody saw, okay, the German, German team is capable. So sometimes in football it's such small things because the whole football on this high level is so competitive. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why hopefully this time in Germany at home, um, with great atmosphere, with awesome stadiums, with, uh, with great fans, um, hopefully this little thing, this foot or this, this goal, this, this goal post and then it goes in, um, goes into the right direction for Germany and then I think with, with this uh, enthusiasm and, and love for sport, I think it can be a, a really great uh, Euro, uh, Euro again, yeah. Sure. So back to the kids. So um, DFB Academy, let's talk about it. So yeah, I understand that the, the establishment of academy is trying to unify the football pyramid system and training. So that uh, that means the the germ football in Germany so go to the single direction or the unified direction. So um, back to the um, two years ago. So uh, do you, do you see how? How how his uh, how the thing is going so and is there any impact so far on the on the youth training system? Um, I don't think that um, you see uh, such a fast impact. Mm -hmm. Usually, football. If you change something in in your overall direction or philosophy, mm -hmm. um, usually it takes some years. Yeah. And in football, usually I would say it takes eight years, uh, yeah. eight to ten years, maybe a little bit faster. It depends on the level where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah, so which means you cannot see any impact so far from, the, uh, from that academy. And then again, I think it's, uh, it should be uh, the work of the clubs again um, to produce those players. Uh, so we need to, um, all the clubs, um, um, they need to to, to check, okay, what, what did we do so far? What are we lacking? And what do we do good as well? I mean, there are many things the German, uh, I think the, the education system in Germany is really very, very good and there are very great things um, in it. Um, I mean, think about the schools and football combined so that uh, schools are working with the clubs together in order to bring uh, the talents um, to your club or you bring coaches to the school to train um, even more and, um, and more focused on that. So there are many, many things which are very, very good in football um, in Germany. Uh, but still, um, what I said in the beginning is, um, if, you if you stop developing, you will g go down a little bit. So that's why we, s we always have to check, okay, are we still doing the right things? Mm -hmm. And I think that the, um, uh, in Germany, um, people are are realizing that okay there are some countries uh, they they are producing more talents and that's why we have to change uh, have to change something and that's what uh, have have been done and now let's see whether it works if it doesn't work we need to change again but give it a, give it a little bit of time 
So don't uh, do it like, um, sorry to say that, sometimes here in China that you, you have um, a German World Cup winner and then everybody says, hey, Germany is the best and then suddenly you have the France and then France is the best and you, sh you shift it all the way around and then um, suddenly Croatia is doing great or, or some other countries is doing great and you try to copy. Don't copy, find your, your own thing and this is very important that um, every nation has, has their own football roots as well. Yeah. And you need to find those and then based on those football routes, you need to develop your system. And if you, if you copy something, it won't work because usually it doesn't fit into your country because you are different and, and we are different and Germany is different. That's why, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see how the uh, DFB Academy supports um, the football talents um, or German football to, uh, to produce even better talents. But as I said, it's very important that you give the development some time. Uh, yeah. so it, it takes some time. Mm. So, yeah, you talk about China. So there's a one thing I'd like to, for you to compare. So um, for the amateur and grassroots football, so uh, can you compare the, um, the or, or your, do you have any observations uh, between the Germany and China? And because we all know that amateur and grassroots football is very important because football is a uh, bottom-up sport. Mm -hmm. So you, you need a very uh, broad base of the players, then you can eventually develop uh, a good elite team. It's not a top-down sport. So, um, so how could you compare this? Uh, or do you have any insights about this? I mean, I wouldn't compare because, again, every yeah. country is different. So that's why I, I usually, um, how do I analyze a country or how do I look into a country is mm -hmm. usually I look at look in history yeah, or look at history and uh, and try to understand the society in the country and try to understand okay how is the education system um, over the years where, where, where there are changes or was it all the time the same um, things like this I'm checking and and here in China to be honest there is uh, education system was like this all the time, eh? like you like hundred, I would say hundred of hundreds of years, eh? like yeah. the Gao Kao and and um, and always with the exams and very important that the the exams and then you have um, many other things like the Olympics and then you have the Olympics in uh, in the province provinces, yeah. you have the Olympics in the cities and all those things are much more important. So results are very very important here. Yeah. So. But does that help in development and does that help? I mean, you, you talked about grassroots football. I mean, in the end, um, results and competitiveness is very important, but in grassroots football and in, in younger ages, it's, a, it's about the passion and it's about the love for the sport. And as soon as you have enough people who love the sport, who would support this sport, no matter what happens with the higher guys, whether, yeah. whether they uh, need to go to prison or not, yeah. you still love the sport and you have it in your society, that is important and we are not there yet. That's why it is, cho it's, it is our job, um, the people who are working football, to show this passion to everybody. Why do we love football? Why do we love some other sports? Uh, and show that it is worth giving your kids a great environment in a team sport um, where you learn much more than only juggling the ball or dribble the ball. You learn how to behave in a team. You, you learn how to win and lose. You le learn how to be disciplined. You learn how to be on time. And all those things um, is such a great, um, let's say, another part of life. So it's not only education, it's also um, how can I combine sports with education and then you you can have a, a really healthy childhood, I think, and, um, and, and you can also educate the kids which, with much more things than only the, the textbook. Yeah, so, yeah, that's why I, I don't want to compare it. I think um, it's, it's very important that um, here in China we try to build that here, this, this passion, this love for the sport, this, um, that the kids understand why is football such a great, um, great sport and why does everybody in the world loves this sport? Yeah, this is back to the dream of being good. So that, I think this is very really important. It's very important to have this dream, yeah. yes. Um, I agree, but it's also very important that you don't um, put this 
on as number one that yeah. that it is only about being professional and sometimes here in China I have the feeling that if you play football it's about being professional football player and, but and in the beginning in Germany yeah. the way I grew up was I played football because I just loved it and I never thought about professional football player because it was so far away and then suddenly mm -hmm. when I was 14 15 16 I was People said I was very talented mm -hmm. and I was picked up by, S by, by Freiburg, by my former club, yeah. and I, I was able to play on the highest level. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, when I was small, I never thought about that. And I never thought about, of course, I had a dream, yeah. but I didn't have the aim. or I, it, it was not like when I go to, to the pitch here sometimes mm -hmm. and I see the coaches shouting at kids, they are this old and yeah, you have to do this and that. I'm like, okay, this is, I'm not sure whether the kid, when it's 16, and there we are talking about working more, yeah. I'm not sure whether those kids are going to still do more outside of the training. And that is much more important. And then if you, and I always say, you're going to be the best in what you do if you love what you do. And you have to love it. So thank you very much for your time, Matthias. So thanks. Thanks, thanks for having and me. Yeah. Hopefully we can see you next time. So sure, okay. see you next yeah. time. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you so much.